Hello, welcome to the 19th day of December, 2021. Uh, this is the Good Life Meditation. My name's Kurt. Let's talk about yesterday. By the way, today it's interesting. It's interesting how you, how I have to uh, think about yesterday through the filter of today's, of this morning's lens. I'm not feeling eager about the day. It's, as usual, it's because of work. I always, I always worry about work. Tomorrow, I've got a, I've got to go in on site and then do a tour. Um, reading for part as part of a project that I'm taking on, and I'm all, I'm anxious about it. And then that kind of just cascades into other things, you know. Anxiety about, you know, the state of my life. You know, the condition of readiness for retirement. You know, and then you think about, you know, how, how good a job did I do as a dad? And uh, am I a good husband? And et cetera, et cetera. It's interesting how it kind of runs away. It's like a, it's like a forest fire that, you know, goes. So through that lens, looking at yesterday, yesterday was another well-executed day. Um, it was nothing particularly eventful, just, you know, taking care of business, or the business of life. You know, you think when I went to Irvine, and, um, well, I did all my morning stuff, we went to Irvine, and uh, I sat in the apartment, uh, old apartment, waiting for the inspection guy to come, well, you went to Ikea and got some stuff. Um, then after that, she and I went shopping at uh, Costco, and then Trader Joe's, and then Tokyo Central. Had a nice talk with the woman that was at the checkout at Tokyo Central. That was nice. It's neat to have that that human con- connection sometimes. Each of us is doing the routine, running on the hamster wheel. <laughs> but uh, yet taking a moment to uh, chat across the void, the void of that busyness. And then we I came home. I was so tired coming home, man. I did a little research. Research. Spent probably an hour studying about uh, the null hypothesis and the candidate hypothesis, understanding each of them. I learned that uh, that no position or nothing. Is in is within the within the terrain terrain of the null hypothesis, which is which is really interesting. Nothing or no position is null. I need to, I need to understand it more. This is part of the battle that I'm trying to do over the one principle, the pirate ride. Trying to decide if, what I'm going to do with that. That person's question two days ago, questioning. Uh, my assertion of no free will, um, really, it was a really great, really helpful, because it really caused me to, to look at this carefully, and I've continued to do so. With that, let's get started. The Good Life Meditation is uh, seven objectives and 30 principles. Here they go. First, uh, seven are the objectives. One is to be always ready to die. Two is to make good and effective use of time. My third objective is to develop and maintain good and sound life principles. This is the one that I'm working on as I pursue the understanding of um, the null hypothesis so I can apply that in my war against um, my first principle, my war against uh, the pirate ride principle. The next set of objective is the uh, performance of good actions followed by recognition of true limits and true opportunity and then the last objective is to just do one thing slowly I know I'm going quickly through these I'm really tired this morning uh, almost would want to sleep in I uh, something I'd, I'd almost no, I, I don't do I can't remember the last time I slept in maybe I'll finish this in the solitude transcription walk the dogs and take a nap climb back into bed. 
The next is my, uh, my principles. As I said just a moment ago, my first principle is war. To fight this war against the things that I believe, which I'm doing now. The tool of that war and the second principle is reason. And it has three sub-principles in honesty, objectivity, and doubt, which are the characteristics of a reasonable man or woman. Like a child. For that matter. Oh, I'm so tired. Mm. The next principle is the homunculus. The idea that there's a little man or woman that lives inside my head and that that person will die with me. No survival. No afterlife. Next is the pirate ride. No, the anchor hold. It's the place where the homunculus will suffer and die. And I've drawn today's image. This is really more of a depiction of yesterday. That's me on the anchor hold far at sea. That's how I felt yesterday. The water was pretty low. The sea was churning, but I was far enough away from it that it really wouldn't matter. And the sea was uh, burning, but but high. You know that kind of burn that even in the direct sun doesn't doesn't heat you too much, but keeps you keeps you uh, pleasantly warm. That was yesterday. Hmm. That was the homunculus upon the anchor hold. Next one is um, the home of good and evil, the hypothesis that right and wrong. It's not even, a, why am I saying, I'm mixing my things up. It's not a hypothesis. It's, it's a visual concept of right and wrong being written in chalk as a reminder that these things are opinions tentatively held. Sometimes we attempt to uh, liken them into some sort of a law. Right? Imagining them graved in stone or chiseled in our heart. The only one, the only, apparently, seemingly, the only law that appears to be actually chiseled anywhere in us is the mandate from nature that we have more kids, that we have kids. That seems chiseled in us. So we'll reuse that word. Next is um, the principle of nature. No. Take a home, the home of good and evil. Principle of nature, yeah, that's it. The purpose. I talked about that purpose is biology, virtue, and mission. Those are our, our reasons to be. Then comes nature. Everything has a particular nature. It's a nature is a nature of life to be cyclical in terms of our how we feel. Our emotional our emotional uh, well being. I'm exhausted. Okay, let me compose myself. That was the principle of nature. And now comes the principle of maturity. No, no. The pirate ride, the thing that I wanted, no, I want to challenge, the idea, the hypothesis of no free will. I don't, uh, this one is in for heavy, heavy scrutiny right now. I'm shining the light on it. The question comes down to what the default position is. What is the null hypothesis? It's pretty clear to me that the null hypothesis is, um, well, how do you phrase it? Like the null hypothesis in the God debate is that God does not exist. That's the null hypothesis. Is the null hypothesis for free will that 
free will does not exist. The characteristics seem different. I don't know that I can do that. I need to think more about it. Anyway, that's what it is. Then comes, uh, okay, okay. Getting back on my horse. That's the uh, pirate ride. And then comes the principle of maturity and the sub-principles of wisdom and fortitude. We're wise when we remember, when we learn and remember from our experiences of all of life. And it takes effort and energy to focus on not repeating those and to doing right, doing good, doing well. Then comes... Uh, The social principle. We are social animals. We need one another. Then comes public speaking. The recommendation to use few words. Is carefully chosen words and deliberate words and to not speak of others. To not gossip. To speak about others as though they can hear what I'm saying about them. You know, I just had a thought. I was thinking that this must be what it's like when you get old. Imagine like the one of the principles that's coming up, which is the risk of avoiding risk, which I'll cover now, which suggests that the the deep level risk of of doing what we want in life and enjoying our life by you know for for some sort of fulfillment, and then the surface level risks of you know education, family, home, etc. I, I propose that there's a great risk that if we go for the surface level stuff early, get all that secured, but then keep postponing the deep stuff, they'll reach a point where we'll be so old and tired and uh, disinterested that we'll just let it all go. We'll just say, ah, screw it. Turn around and sit on the lazy boy sofa and wait for death. I can feel that now. Now, my work is done, fortunately. I've, I've completed the things that I wanted to write. But if I hadn't, I would be tempted to say, ah, just screw it. <laughs> Especially on a day like today. So I just covered the risk of the deep, the risk of avoiding risk. And then I also covered um, uh, public speaking. Now let's go to um, temperance and the sub-principles of suffering, some simplicity, and apathy. Temperance is our controlled consumption of things. Like I'm really, really trying hard right now to control my, my in, giving in to this exhaustion that I feel this morning. And, you know, kind of, it's an exhaustion kind of tempered with or, or flavored with a, a mild anxiety about the week to come, starting tomorrow. But maturity is yelling at me, is saying, it's, it's, it's all going to be just fine. It always is. You know, nothing related to work at this point anymore is dire. It never really was to be, never really was to begin with. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a first world man. Um, my falls are covered. It's, it, uh, nevertheless, I, 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 I fret. So temperance is controlling our consumption and our running, running away with this stuff. Let's see if I can remember that I, my new principles in their order. I have. Two new principles. Now, I know what they are, but I'm going to check my notes because I want to make sure I get it right because it's his first week or so of, of, in, in, of bringing new principles into the lineup that are the tricky ones. If I can get it right week after week, then I'm in good shape. But I'm just going to double check that I got it right. But I'm pretty sure I know what, I know what the next two are. That third one. Let me make sure I got that one right. Okay, I got that one too. 
Okay, the next uh, principle is the horror show. Life is chock full of horror. Not just human life, but life in general. Horror in the uh, entree into life, the experience of it, and then our exit. There's no shortage of atro atrocities. Which we have no choice but to bear. Some people choose not to bear and they leave. Sometimes due to those horrors. Sometimes that's just a part of the reason. Some of us choose to live our lives trying to work to alleviate some of the horror or to prevent the horror. So I guess the horror can be woven into our mission in a way. Maybe that's the mission of the best of us. Some of the, the next principle, some, some of the horror... But it's not always horror. Sometimes, sometimes it's just consequence. Um, has to simply be born. B-O-R-N-E. Carried. We can't escape it. Or get past. We have to carry it. That's why that principle is the thing is much to be born. And it's helpful when we encounter such things to not... Uh, to not to recognize it with that what that's what they are and to just bear them, like I would really like to not have to go into work this week. Uh, like I said, it's, again, it's not a bad week. It's just my it's just my tendency to way to react to things, but that is something that I have to bear. It is a thing that which, which must be born, and I will. Okay, so that was that. The next is the feast of Oval, which is the what we do when we get too upset, when we're not temperate, when we, the horror show gets to us, when a thousand other possibilities compound to make us, you know, lose our shit in front of others and uh, upset, upset everyone. That's the Feast of Oval. I try not to do that. And I'm pretty good at it these days, if I do say so myself. I guess it comes with practice. Uh. Next is uh, the distraction. We distract ourselves from the awful emptiness of the universe, which I call the great indifference. Next is the not want to not want. It's the best seat in the house to not want to be anyone else or be anywhere else or be doing anything else, but to be okay just where I am and who I am and do with what I'm doing. Next comes the path of wildness. It's a way upward and forward through new life. It's easy to find the course of a stream, leaves blown in the wind, a beast's track through the brush, and the direction of our first inclination. Now, I know that the new third principle is right now, but I just can't remember what it is. It's just a fuzzy thing in my in my brain. So let me look it up to remember what it is. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I realize now that it's... This one is a lot like the other new principle, um, that which must be born. But it is different. Maybe I can make it into a sub principle. It's called the it's called hand on the teller, and it's just my reminder to to, to steady steady she, as she goes, steady the course. Like like through times like this that are tough right now, just stay stay the course, Kurt. Don't don't hand on the teller. The sea will get better. That's a lot like. That which must be born. I need to think about that. I'll keep them separate for today. <sighs> the 
risk of avoiding risk. I talked about that one already, the deep and surface level risks of life. Sin and damnation is the next one. And the seven sins of hope, faith, credulity, superstition, dogma, authority, and gossip. And the consequence of indulging in these sins is damnation in the here and now. The next principle is complete oblivion. We will all be wiped out utterly. There will be no seeing anyone else in any afterlife. There will be no chance to fix the problems that we didn't fix during our life. No chance to say I'm sorry or to receive a sorry from someone who's gone. Or to give that to others if we'd want to. And uh, no uh, justice. The crimes that we get away with upon when we're dead, we, we're, we're, off, we're off for good. Except for the consequence throughout our lives. Okay, that was complete oblivion. Now, the great life adventure, which is one of more important events in life that become kind of a foundation of our ide identity. And then the principle of the, sea of, of the season of philosophy, a time to record what, what we've learned along the way. Then the bullseye aim, uh, striving for the mark, yet nearly always missing. The uphill climb, again, another one like the hand on the teller and things which must be born, although different, different enough maybe to be separate. The uphill climb, life is a, is a steady trudge up. Arena and utility. Life is like living or working or playing, sleeping in an arena where we're performing with uh, instruments against uh, savage beasts and other men. Which instruments are our objectives and principles? And the last one, one thing slowly. No, no, no. Nothing is enough. Remind ourselves that sometimes nothing is plenty. Wow, and with that, let's forecast the day and close. Um, I forecast a rough morning. I don't feel good this morning. Don't worry. I mean, I, I'm, I'm in this. I've been here many times. I know I know how to get through this. I know that if I, even if I don't do anything, if I just wait it out, like the homunculus on the anchor hold there uh, the seas will calm and the waters will diminish and I'll, I'll uh, move on through but it would like to be <clears throat> more proactive in that effort I don't want to waste the day or waste the time it's, it's just this, this tide alright well I'll close for now thanks for joining me today May, uh, be safe but not too safe take care